just want to welcome everybody to the Energy Storage Market Series. Today, we're going to be hearing from Terrence Parker, Compliance and Application Engineer at Solus US. Uh, before we dive in and while we're waiting for more people to join, uh, I'll just give a little bit more background on Renvu and some of the products and, and services that we offer. My name's Nick. I'm a sales engineer here at Renvu. Um, Renvu was founded in 2012, based out of Mountain View, California, but we do have fulfillment centers on the West and East Coast, as well as in Texas. Um, our entire sales team has an engineering background, uh, which allows us to go into depth on projects with our customers, whether it be small residential DIY projects up to larger commercial uh, projects as well. So happy to help on any of those. Uh, next slide. Just a couple of the uh, additional services that we offer. Um, we offer engineering services and permit packages, uh, again, from small DIY projects up to, to commercial projects. So if you have um, any needs or questions about those, we're happy to help. Um, we have a number of different online quote and design assistance tools, which we'll, we'll take a look at it at the end of the presentation. Um, but they range anywhere from getting a full bill of materials quoted out to wire sizing, to shade calculators, and everything in between. Uh, we have a number of different financing options as well, um, be it for uh, businesses to get uh, credit terms uh, up to 12 months or uh, full project financing for residential uh, projects or commercial. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, just a couple of the complementary products um, that we offer that will work great with uh, Solus. We have um, AP Systems and AP Smart. Uh, so AP Smart offers a, a, a fantastic uh, rapid shutdown solution that's very well priced um, and very convenient. Uh, Longi, we have the 360 watt modules uh, arriving soon. Uh, import clearing customs should hopefully have them in our warehouse shortly. Um, BYD, a uh, great energy storage system um, that can compare with Solus um, with their hybrid inverters, uh, comes in uh, 2.5 kilowatt hour increments um, that can be stacked up uh, in sort of the, the fashion shown. Um, Powerfield, uh, it's a great simple solution for a ballasted ground mount application. Um, as you can see, it's it's pretty simple single unit uh, for mounting the panels to and then filling with ballast. We have a, a webinar we did previously with that as well. I think it's up on our YouTube page. Um, NLX, uh, which is a step two 48 amp EV charger. Um, so a really great option for anybody who's adding solar because they're bringing in a, a, an electric vehicle and, and need a solution for that. Um, and then finally, Bleeker, our residential carport solution. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, after we hear from Terrence uh, at the end of the presentation today. Um, having said all that, uh, I think uh, we can go ahead and, if you can go to the next slide there, it should be all set. So I'll go ahead and kick it over to Terrence. Uh, I'll thank you as well, and, and I'll let you jump into your presentation. Thanks, Nick. Great introduction to Renvu. And uh, indeed, we will get into a little bit more detail on that carport solution, very slick. Uh, so for, uh, let's just talk a little bit about who Jinlong Technologies is. Jinlong Technologies is the name of the company, and we sell our inverters under the Solus brand name. We are well, we consider ourselves number one when it comes to being the largest PV string inverter manufacturer uh, today who focuses exclusively on PV string inverters. And uh, we were founded in 2005. Uh, so we have over 17 years of history. Um, in 2009, uh, we got our first UL listed Solus inverter here in the US. Um, and we've been hitting a lot of milestones ever since, including in 2019 when we became a public company. And you can see here, uh, we're listed under the Shenzhen Stock Exchange there. And I guess the exciting news for us is that we're op we've opened up a new factory, August. Uh, we're just completing some of the buildings there and uh, loading in the last machines, but already have started production. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a move that we needed to make as we glow, uh, grow globally. And you can see we've got PV systems in over 100 countries today and uh, are represented around the world. We have uh, 
TUV, IEC, uh, our hybrid inverter, for example, has been released for many years uh, in other countries, and we just got the UL listing for it in 2019. And uh, so we're offering our full line here as well. You can see, for example, that we're number four global PV string inverter versus for market share in 2020 Q3. So uh, it's a lot of... Uh, 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 engineering and uh, work uh, with different sales groups around the world that are all part of the Jinlon family, uh, over 2,000 of us now, uh, 300 engineers who are all focused mainly in our China facility. We have our own factory, so we don't use contract manufacturers. We uh, uh, have our own uh, board making uh, uh, capabilities. We make our own arc fault boards and uh, digital signal processing boards, these sorts of things, as well as uh, having long-term relationships with our suppliers. For example, we didn't really have too much of a chip problem uh, over the past year, uh, mainly because we have uh, long-term contracts and relationships with our suppliers. Um, now, you know, being a company, a foreign company here working here in the U.S., we want to make sure that we have third-party validation for your teams and for proof of uh, both concept and of the company and of the products. And DNVGL gave us a great compliment. Uh, Natasha uh, loves talking about this particular one because in reality, we thought it was rated as practically the highest as far as uh, uh, reliability and uh, longevity. So we're very proud of that. And we also have many awards from EUPD uh, for our products around the world, as well as rating by Bloomberg NEF. So giving you a little bit of confidence, I hope, in the company uh, that you're not talking about some uh, you know, fly-by-night uh, company, for sure, you can see that we're at, we're building and quite a facility, this 20 gig facility, 20 gigawatts of inverters per year. Our sales are growing and we need this kind of capacity. Um, here in the U.S., though, uh, what we have developed really uh, is a, a service group. We had uh, a guy named Austin Tabor who had worked at uh, both uh, Huawei and at SMA and wasn't quite able to, to realize what he felt would be a fantastic, uh, very responsive service team. And indeed, that's what we're proud of. We expect that you'll get through our, our menu, you know, uh, in about a minute. And within five, six minutes, we'll have, our, we'll, have, we'll have picked up the phone and have understood your problem to a point where we can pretty much make a, a, a call on whether or not that's an immediate RMA, whether and or whether or not you might need to consult with a couple of documents or maybe a video that we've made that you can Google. Actually, we uh, can you can Google our uh, service number. You can Google any of our sir, our, our error code or alarm codes. There's only about 28, I think, 28 or 29 of them, and and so three or four of them are immediate RMA. Three or four, you know, require us to kind of make sure that you. Uh, got the install uh, uh, perfectly correct. And, and others are just uh, environmental and other conditions that have affected the system. And we got to work together to see if we can't come up with a good uh, uh, strategy for you going out there. We want to reduce the number of truck rolls, reduce the amount of, of uh, pressure on your profit by having to return to that site over and over again. Um, one of the convenient things we offer on our website is this IA, uh, this AI bot, uh, artificial intelligent bot, that you can actually start your own RMA uh, just uh, uh, with, like I say, with three or four error codes, uh, and we talk on the I'll talk on the phone. You can really get this going right away. So, uh, we we'll, we track all of our calls, we track the RMA, so you'll be able to really see what's going on with the progress of your uh, inquiry and uh, what's going on with your RMA and where it is. Um, so that kind of, we feel that kind of comfort level, that kind of responsiveness is what the PV industry needs and the kind of, that we feel as though is the proper way to do it. You really need to pick up the dang phone, you know, when your customers call and have people on there that can, that can give a response that's going to be able to get that installer moving forward, so. You can see there are three different, uh, I'm sorry, I went and moved a little fast there, uh, three different um, sizes of inverter really, but they're very all similar. Matter of fact, we use similar parts and similar chips in all of our inverters globally. 
For example, these inverters here are almost identical to the inverters that you would see in India or China or, or UK or South America. This is way how we're able to maintain quality and keep that pricing low because we're able to consolidate so many of our part manufacturers into all of our inverter sets and indeed uh, well, you can see the smaller inverter there from two, from 3.6 to 5K, very small, right? Weight, less than 40 pounds, that sort of thing. Um, two MPPTs, whereas in the uh, 6 to 10, you have three to four MPPTs, all grid tie, NEMA 4X enclosures that you can see there. And then on the right, you see our latest product, uh, the um, residential um, hybrid inverter, RHI, uh, HVES, that's high voltage energy storage. It's our fifth generation, and we offer a 5, a 7.6, and a 10K today. And this is a critical load backup type of panel, uh, type of system, as opposed to a stackable whole home system. And we'll talk about how Solus is on the path to solve both of these types of use cases. So let's get into the residential grid tie. This is, uh, we, you may not have heard of us. Uh, uh, we were white labeling for many years with Sunrun. Uh, through this, we, as I noted, we uh, went public in 2019. And so we wanted to start promoting our own brand name. And indeed, even Sunrun is using our brand name inverters. Uh, but um, you can see there's two different sizes there, both, uh, both of them under 50 pounds, but uh, they have a two-line LCD screen on there and four buttons to manipulate uh, the screen settings. And indeed, you can commission these inverters so quickly. I mean, it's a PV string inverter, right? There's no discovery of MLPE in the field. And so this is the five-minute kind of uh, uh, commissionings that you had always hoped for and, and still can accomplish with these inverters. The most obvious, I think, differentiator for these inverters is the four independent dynamic MPPTs. That is, you know, on this 10K, uh, 7.6K has three, but you could load them as low as four modules on uh, each uh, MPPT. And you can load each MPPT up to as much as 4,000 watts. So that means that on that 10K, you could put as much as 16K on that inverter. And as I know, each MPPT is dynamic and independent. That is, it's checking every know, five seconds or so to go across the voltage range of that MPPT to find those global max power points as opposed to maybe some lower uh, uh, localized max power points. So that's the advantage of having a fast and dynamic MPPT is that it can optima ensure that you are hitting the max power point for that particular string, no matter what kind of shadowing or shading is on partial, some of the modules on. Uh, now, because the uh, each one is, is quite independent of each other, in theory, if you do have a very shadowed area, you're gonna, it's going to be hard to find roofs that have more than four facets, but some do, and some have uh, maybe a shaded area with some dormer or something like that. You could isolate, uh, let's say, three or let's say four of the modules, four or five of the modules on one MPPT, and that would handle that as best as can with those with those uh, shadows. But then on the other three MPPTs, load them up with the rest of the system, and so you can optimize that roof with how you set it up the the strings and the MPPTs. Uh, of course, these are all uh, uh, CEC listed for Rule 21. Uh, we are listed with SA today. We recently just got, uh, on September 28th, the final version of UL 1741SB, and our labs are already working and getting that qualified so that we can get on the CEC list as soon as possible. We expect that end of year, uh, beginning of uh, first year. Um, and indeed, it is a quality you can feel. When you pick up these inverters, you'll find it's a uh, off-white powdered coated inverter, NEMA 4X, relatively lightweight. So you can feel that quality, that the stiffness of the product, you know, how it's, well it's put together, that sort of thing. But, uh, and, and indeed, uh, fully sealed. Um, and I think uh, something you can mount on the wall quite easily and, and have a very small footprint on that wall. Another thing that really speeds up the install is how we set up our communications. We have them all in these uh, touch safe, deployable, externally connected Wi-Fi sticks, 
uh, uh, LAN sticks, just converting our, 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 uh, our interface to a, to a RJ45 jack on the outside of the inverter, or uh, should your customer uh, fool around with Wi-Fi for a little while, but then get a little tired of it, uh, uh, having getting locked out because they changed routers or had to change passwords, they may decide to go cellular. And we have a phenomenally good little cellular stick here, uh, five and 10 year plans, touch safe install, literally auto configuring. So you can just unscrew, finger unscrew the uh, Wi-Fi stick and just screw right in a cellular stick, okay, quite easy. Um, and uh, it'll auto configure and get right up right away. So it's, it's, it's the same to your truck roll is really what it's about. Uh, the, the price uh, uh, may be irrelevant compared to the amount of money that you gotta spend just sending a guy out there to replace a Wi-Fi stick with a cellular stick with heck, a savvy installer uh, or savvy customer can actually do it themselves. And so uh, uh, it's a nice feature and unique feature of Solus. Um, and then of course, we to follow that up, we have the Solus Cloud um, where you register and, and, and you can monitor your pro, uh, things as a, as a fleet manager. You can use our Solus Pro uh, Solus Cloud program or as an individual, use our Solus Home and you can monitor your own system on your own phone. Um, but it's reducing CapEx on your install. I think that's really interesting and being able to reduce soft costs by reducing labor time on site um, and having a little bit kind of flexibility. This is the fantastic thing about working with Renvu is that they offer so many compatible products with Solus. If you can use our cellular stick or a Wi-Fi stick, but if you want to tie into also energy, for example, uh, or some other monitoring program that you happen to like, this is an option with Solus. Uh, you'll see later on, we have a, a multiple of batteries that you can use. We have a multiple of a rapid shutdown devices you can use. You can go SunSpec with us. Uh, you can go Tygo with us. You can, we don't have to have a, an integrated uh, uh, transmitter in the unit at all. You can use an external transmitter or no transmitter at all. If you're, if you're on an agricultural building, for example, you can save some bucks and not have to put in that rapid shutdown system. So it's design flexibility, being able to use a number of different uh, components to put together your bundle so that it works for you, works for your customers, optimized for that particular site. And then having the uh, flexibility of using uh, different parts and being able to install anywhere in the United States as it's fully certified uh, CSIP as well as Re Rule 21, ISO NE, uh, um, so you have, I hope, that kind of flexibility to put your systems together so that you can optimize profit. Because remember, we're trying to get to margin here for these installers so that you can have a successful business with this product. But success doesn't follow unless your product is operating. And, and with a string inverter, it's kind of one of those, uh, you know, not quite set and forget, but it's close because you've got such uh, reliability in the field proven across the globe that these inverters, because of their wide operating range and high efficiencies, even at low loading, I mean, you can be down to 15% and these inverters are still operating at over 97% efficiency. And so you can utilize those ends of day and beginning of day low light uh, conditions and that inverter will squeeze out as many kilowatt hours as it can uh, to really kind of add to your overall production during the day. And this follows throughout our entire uh, range from, we're going to be focusing mainly on a residential range, but we have a full line of CNI inverters. Uh, we're using our 75 and 100 kilowatt inverters a lot in repowering situations because as you can see, we can go down to 200 volts, meaning that we can power up those old 600 volt arrays uh, with these new 1000 volt inverters very slick and getting full power out even at 350 volts DC. So uh, really a new era, a new uh, type of product that can be deployed for still quite viable, the older PV arrays. Uh, and then of course, we also have a utility scale set up as well. But in all of those cases, we've got very wide operating ranges and it's kind of the hallmark of, a, of a Solus. So, what does it give you? It gives you performance, really. Outside of this NEMA 4X tight, reliable box, you've got uh, excellent performance on a PV string inverter. As I noted, 97% plus efficiency over an entire loaded range from 10% to 100%. And then um, you also might notice that this inverter uh, has excellent 
temperature management, and you get that clue from the fact that we don't even uh, ramp down any power all the way up to 50 C ambient temperatures, right? And then at 50 C, we start ramping down towards 60 C, which ambient temperatures, which maybe you could, you know, 52 C, we saw that in New Delhi, but uh, uh, I think we saw it in Furnace, uh, Furnace Valley down there in Death, uh, Death Valley area just recently uh, this summer, but uh, generally you're not going to see 60C unless you're like uh, inside of a, 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 clo a closet, a, a working closet or something like that. But indeed, if the inverter does feel 60C ambient, it will start down to protect itself, but then automatically come back up again as the temperatures cool. So it's temperature management within a NEMA 4X box that we've been working on since our inception in 2005. We've always used a NEMA 4X box because our original inverters were on wind towers and battered by the wind from all six sides. And so we had to build a tight uh, enclosure for that. And we've kept that tradition through the years. But if you're gonna have a tight enclosure like this, you have to have excellent management of uh, temperatures. And for example, our inductors and that sort of thing, some of the high temperature stuff has actually been moved out and is uh, blocked in with the heat sink. You might notice uh, when you flip this inverter over. Now, Reduce number of SKUs on site. This is a big deal, of course, when you're talking about some other systems is the number of boxes that you get on site. Well, if we've integrated our rep, uh, revenue grade metering, we've, rev uh, we've integrated the DC disconnect and essentially put the combiner box inside the inverter, uh, the rapid shutdown transmitters included, you essentially have no other boxes on the wall other than this box and you plug and play your, uh, your uh, telecommunications uh, 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 Wi-Fi solution there, uh, and you are ready to rock with just that single box on the wall, very skinny, very thin, uh, low footprint uh, at the site. Uh, this just speaks to our flexibility when it comes to receiver brands, for example, Sunspec, Tygo, NEP is another Sunspec uh, 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 type that it also includes some interesting uh, uh, temperature uh, sensing and, and, and even monitoring potentially. Uh, Tygo Enhanced has uh, actually expanded their product line a little bit, but we like their uh, uh, PLC communicating TS4 line. Um, but we've also installed their uh, systems with their net, with their uh, TAP and their CCA. So we can work with the full Tygo line as well as working with any SunSpec re uh, receiver. We really love this open protocol with SunSpec because should you know you install an AP Smart uh, system, which you see is available uh, from uh, Renvu today, um, uh, maybe five, 10 years from now, we have one of the units uh, blow out or you notice that the, that the PV module is very hot for some reason and uh, it's been disconnected. You can just easily sub out another AP Smart uh, a unit, or maybe a Z-Run, or maybe a JMTHY uh, unit, because they're all, they all speak the same language and they give that installer a bit of flexibility. Um, now, I kind of want to talk about the latest star of the show for Solus here in the U.S. Like I say, we've been, we've been doing battery systems, both high voltage and low voltage around the world for many years, but we've introduced this high voltage battery solution here. Uh, we are looking at a low voltage battery solution, uh, but uh, uh, we today are offering a high voltage solution, a uh, wide variety of batteries that you can use this product with. But again, it's essentially our grid tie inverter that's battery ready. It has that same excellent performance, low loading down to 10% and still over 97% efficient, uh, flex for giving you that flexibility in PV stringing. Um, certified around the world, battery ready, grid tie inverter with three operating modes, self-consumption. If you're trying to reduce that greenhouse gas emissions, lower your carbon footprint, this inverter will gather all the kilowatt hours, including everyone you use during the day. And then uh, whatever you're uh, exporting to the grid uh, uh, via solar, but all that solar can also charge that battery. And you can set the system up so that it just charges from PV or that it can charge from the grid. You can also limit the amount of grid power that goes out. Fully customizable uh, uh, product. And you'll, you might even notice that you'll see the Brazilian standard in there. You'll see the UK standard in there when you're setting your standard to UL240 uh, with uh, AFCI enabled. Uh, you'll also notice that there's many other choices there because the same inverter can work in other countries. Um, as I note, it comes standard with a self-consumption, but you can set it up for time of use pricing. You can even literally use this inverter as an off-grid inverter. Now, 
I want to make it clear right now that we're not offering with this particular fifth generation inverter a whole home solution. We're offering a what we like to call a critical load panel. Not It's not partial home because indeed it's just part of your home, but indeed it can be critical loads to that home. For example, here in Michigan, a homeowner literally cannot leave his, his home in rainy weather too much because he might be worried if the power goes out, the sump pump won't work and his basement will flood. So for us Michiganders, really the sump pump is a critical load that must be operating uh, 24 seven. And even if the power goes out, it needs to be there. Same thing with a security system in your home, you know, and maybe lighting circuit and maybe, you know, something to keep the games going for the kids. Uh, have, you know, you fire up your microwave or your convection up or something like that and keep the refrigerator going. These are the critical loads that'll get you through these temporary power outages and shoot even with, you know, on a 10K inverter with the 12, 15K of PV and these BYD batteries, you can pretty much be off grid with those loads indefinitely. Uh, it's this kind of flexibility that this kind of hybrid inverter gives you. You don't have to put in a second inverter. You know, you don't have to put a uh, charge controllers and all that stuff in. It's all included in one box. <laughs> kind of lowering that overall footprint in the garage. I've seen many cases where the inverter is literally just right above uh, the BYD stack. And, it, and it's no more than two feet by, you know, a full three feet out for access. And it's such a nice little footprint in the, uh, in the garage. Uh, again, just like our, our, our other inverters, all CEC and uh, HECO listed, that sort of thing. Now, I think one of the unique things about this particular inverter that sets it apart from our grid tie is this large color screen on it. And this is beautiful for, you know, just sort of walking by the inverters, you're getting in your car, uh, and you can see literally right on the screen which direction the energy is flowing. Is it going from my PV to my battery? Is it going from my PV to my loads? Is it going to my PV? Is, my, is the power out and my PV and, and battery is going to the critical load panel? It's all right there on the screen with arrows and, and, and descriptors and that sort of thing. And you'll also be able to chart performance uh, uh, over the month or over the day, whatever you like, uh, very easily uh, on this color screen. And you can also uh, uh, change the standards and change how much export power it has, that sort of thing, uh, easily by using the four buttons just underneath that screen. Again, SunSpec and Tygo uh, certified. Um, and you can see a bit of an eye chart there, but uh, you can see a bit of a, a drawing for a typical system. Uh, you can see that the PV arrays uh, can be variable sizes. Uh, the battery is connected on the DC side. This is a DC coupled system, very efficient. Uh, and then you can see there's also a, a battery communications. There's a there and there's inverter communications as well with a little meter that you see in the top right, which we install when you put in your uh, when you want to do TOU or you want to do ba uh, battery management, uh, battery backup, that sort of thing. With this meter should be installed, but uh, should you not need it, you don't need the meter either. So uh, really, you can strip this down to just the PV modules, the inverter and uh, the breaker box. But should you want to bring in uh, 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 a, a critical load panel, you will require our uh, auto transformer. And you can see we set it up, customized it for you where essentially you just got, uh, you wire your inverter to the transformer, you wire critical load to the transformer and you wire your uh, 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 main uh, service panel to the, uh, to, the, to the auto transformer and you are done. Uh, these sorts of ease of, of connection that's provided by the solar system uh, makes it a fast install and makes it an uh, ease of install by, by solid uh, communication and uh, con connection labeling that's on these boxes. So it goes fast. These are, these are uh, what, what I call uh, uh, a trap door or... Um, um, Oh shoot, I'm losing the name of it right now, but it's a connector that's, that you pry up and you get an excellent connection down on it. You, do, you don't have to come back later and tighten any screws on any of these connections. So again, factory integrated module level shutdown, uh, Solus designed meters and transformers. So you've got the full package ready to go. Um, here you can see a little bit closer look at that screen and you can see how the inverters in the center there, you have a kind of an icon for your home and for your backup loads and battery and meter. And 
it's really, uh, you can really set it up uh, whether you're working with our five kilowatt inverter or our 10 kilowatt, or both of them have the capability of putting out 7,000 watt surge and 6,000 watts continuous. And indeed, that's, we understand that's not enough for a whole home solution and that you have to break out your, uh, some of your loads into a critical load panel. But we think that there's a, a market there for folks who are not willing to put in, you know, 15, 20, 25 more money uh, for these larger whole home systems right now where they might not need all of that right today. And, and indeed, uh, uh, Solus understands this, this market and, uh, and we are developing a whole home solution that can be utilized on 200 amp panels, even larger. So we're very excited to be bringing this out in, uh, uh, later in, in 2022. But for today, I want folks on this call to understand that this is a particular inverter that I think might be a nice offering for those folks who, you know, hear about Tesla systems and doing whole home and that sort of thing. But in reality, really need something to secure their home to ensure that when the power goes out, that they've still got their, I don't know, maybe they got a server at home that, that they use for work or something like that. This is an ideal solution for that. And so it might be like your back pocket solution that's ready to go. It's less money, faster to install, uh, lower footprint, you know. And so it's a kind of cell that I think could be very interesting for those folks who are looking to get into batteries, uh, you know, essentially, you could set this up as a grid tie solution and then come back a year later and see, hey, do you, you think you could use a small battery set to, uh, to back up some of your loads? And in many cases, they'll say, yeah, that would be great. In other cases, they'll want to say, well, you know, we're looking at a whole home solution and they can install that side by side with this grid tie solution. So um, it works a lot of different ways. You, you can also see a, a little uh, screenshot there from the NEP product. This is a, a, a module level monitoring that we can incorporate into our uh, uh, platform so that uh, should uh, you not only require uh, a rapid shutdown uh, in your jurisdiction, but also might find it easier to sell the product if you have module level monitoring to offer, you can do that with these systems. It's really great that, you know, you know, I've been in the business a long time, 30 years, and I've seen PV string inverters being developed through the years. And of course, in 2008, 2009, 2010, I was working uh, actually for a, a microinverter at that time. And so I do understand that concept, but, but I'll tell you, PV string inverters have gotten, uh, they're a bit simpler in their operation. They're faster and less expensive to install. And truthfully, they've gotten quite sophisticated and been able to bring in a lot of that maximum power point tracking that uh, that module level power electronics give you and uh, module level monitoring that those products can also give you. So, they, so they've sort of seen what is out there and they give it, they provide that same reliability. Remember, we've got products in the field since 2010. Right, so we've already gone through our warranty on many of the products we already have in the field, and there are many of those other companies just can't claim that. And so it's that reliability, that solid, you know, critical load, ten milliseconds. Right, it will switch over in ten milliseconds, and you are off grid and keeping the uh, home fires burning until you see what is actually going on in your neighborhood and what you need to do next. Um, here is a bit of the flexibility that we offer. You can see uh, uh, we work with BYD's new, uh, we're getting a solution with their newest uh, HV product. It can stack up to 17 kilowatts and then all the way up to 32. Uh, it's really awesome. We love it. We, we've been currently using the B-Box, which is kind of more of an example you see down below there on the left-hand side. But we're also qualified and, and have sort of UL9540 solution uh, certification with LG and with uh, 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 Pylon Tech and Saluna and a number of others that we're working with. Uh, it's quite exciting as we see new battery uh, solutions come online. But all of this, as, as you, all of you installers know, all of this is, uh, is, is just not going to fly unless uh, the homeowner can see it on their phone, right? And you can see some of the uh, screenshots from folks' phone there, uh, both in the Pro app and the Home app. You can kind of simplify it down to the uh, details, or you can get right into charting right there on your phone. And of course, it's even more rich. Your experience is a bit more rich when you're on Solus Cloud uh, on the web. And, in, and indeed, many uh, fleet operators are using Solus Cloud to operate all of their fleet where they can see all of their product right there online, getting email alerts, 
uh, that sort of thing uh, from the platform. So uh, it's a it's a it's a data push protocol, and uh, we use far as uh, our 485 Modbus communications, uh, both on our single and three phase products, and. Uh, it's a, a SunSpec cloud uh, client aggregator uh, uh, as well, our Solus cloud. And so that's also operating as the intermediary between the uh, inver uh, inverter and the, uh, and the utility. So all of these inverters have what we're calling grid interoperability. And we are all, all inverter manufacturers, including Solus, is looking at the new UL1741 SB, which just got published. And we're all uh, kind of recertifying to that. Uh, SA is still acceptable to be installed all over the country. Uh, uh, that may become uh, more cloudy as we get into uh, 2022, uh, but uh, we're, uh, there's a number of groups that are trying to push that a little bit further out uh, so that uh, installers have ample opportunity to get rid of and to install all the SA product, the UL7041 SA product that they have in stock, that they're familiar with, and that they, when they start to get new UL7040 SB uh, certified product, they're out there and ready to go and uh, can meet their uh, AHJ's requirements. And, and indeed, the, in, the inverter industry wants this. We want to be interoperative interoperatable <laughs> uh, with the grid. We want to uh, show that these are sophisticated units and can work with what the grid throws at us. If they want to shut us down, uh, you know, curtail our power, these sorts of things are things that we're capable of doing. And yet, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about priority. Who has a priority when uh, I say I've set my battery to not discharge past 50%, but the utility wants to discharge as much as possible out of that uh, inver inverter battery set that may have been, uh, you know, listed to them as a 10 kilowatt hour uh, battery, but I'm only allowing five kilowatt hours to come out. So there's a lot of push and pull happening right now uh, in the regulatory world uh, as to who has priority in these kinds of cases. But uh, in the meantime, let's just offer a solid, reliable, PV string inverter that can do a lot of the things that any MLPE system can do, offer the same things, but offer that warranty that you can stand behind. You know, a product that's not going to suck up your uh, profits by continuous callback and, and trying to monitor why, you know, microinverter seven isn't working for some reason. And, and so that reliability, that durability, and that bankability, we hope, is something that you can count on with Solus. Uh, design flexibility gives you more choices in the field, and that performance across the entire loaded field, even in the morning and in the evening, is high so that you're going to be able to get good LCOE out of these products. And indeed, they're the LCOE kings. And if you run them on Aurora or other things like that, you may find uh, they get outperformed by a, a percentage point or something like that by some LPE system because of the algorithms in there. But in real life, you'll see that, and even in that program has to, it comes out with the results that the LCOE is better with these products. And so we're happy to be showing them to you. We, we offer a lot to, of uh, a backup uh, resources for you to call. Uh, check out our, uh, our, our service number and uh, give it, Google it and, uh, and call it up and see if you get a warm body online. I'm betting you will. And, uh, and uh, as an application engineer, I back that up uh, uh, for our service team and uh, look forward to giving you a call. Now, I'd kind of like to turn it back over to, uh, to Nick as he talks a little bit about the, this really cool product that Renvu is offering. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Darren. So I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, as we wrap up here before we jump into the Q&A section, um, talk a little bit about the Bleaker carport system uh, that we have on offer. Um, so uh, it's a really great product built and designed here in the United States. 25-year uh, warranty, incredibly sturdy design. Um, it's currently designed for 35 PSF of snow load and 170 mile per hour wind load, although we are getting certifications for, um, for higher snow and, and wind loads for specific areas. Um, comes with a standard 18 by 18 foot by uh, nine foot uh, array size. So it should fit most um, two car driveways uh, and provide a, a nice covering for, for those areas. Although we have seen people using it um, as a, you know, a shade cover in backyards like a pergola or something along those lines. Um, it's designed to be an incredibly easy installation, so no heavy equipment required. Um, you only need to do uh, two foot, uh, 
depth for the peer um, on either of the four peers uh, and can be constructed with just two people, um, you know, and their hands uh, holding everything up. Um, so it's, it's made to be very simple uh, and easy to install. Um, it comes with a five degree tilt. Um, uh, currently that cannot uh, be changed, although there has been some, some work into looking into potentially having a, a higher tilt, but as far as, as loading, wind loading goes, uh, five degree is the, the current tilt. Um, and it can be a completely uh, sealed surface, so it's very um, versatile and, and easy to use. Uh, go ahead and skip to the next slide. Um, some of the other sort of add-on amenities that it has um, that are helpful, we can provide uh, solar-powered lighting um, for the piers, um, and they're easily mounted to the piers. Um, so you've got some, some extra lighting there uh, as you're pulling in for if, if you need it. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a, a silicon tea gasket for sealing the entire surface, um, so you can have a, a completely watertight surface on the top um, if you're looking to use it for something that would require that. Um, there's this mesh sail, uh, as we call it, that goes on the underside of the, uh, the modules to provide kind of a nice, clean, uh, sleek, aesthetically pleasing look uh, to hide all the cabling in the backsides of the panels. Um, and it's integratable with um, the NLX juice box or any other EV charger. So, uh, and all of the cabling for that matter for the system uh, can all be channeled through the piers. Um, so you're not having cabling and wiring out in the open, but uh, funneled down through the piers um, with easy, easily accessible ports and, and mounting locations for, uh, for everything. Um, but, yep. So yeah, uh, the other big thing uh, to talk about is uh, we have an authorized installer program. Um, very simple. You submit an application. You install three carports. When you finish installing those, uh, installing those three carports, you'll sign the special price agreement, um, and you'll immediately get a thousand dollars back per car. Those first three carports, so you'll get three thousand dollars back uh, immediately after. Uh, installing and signing those. And then after that, um, it's a minimum of five carports per month for the um, program. And then you get $1,000 back per, per carport um, that you install uh, that month. Um, we are uh, taking a look on a case-by-case -case basis and in, in, um, approving uh, lower thresholds for installations after you get those first three installed uh, as you're sort of ramping up business. So uh, feel free to talk with the sales engineer and, and you know, that's something that can potentially be approved. Um, cool. And then just last thing on here, um, I know I, I discussed it at the beginning, but we do have um, the solar kit guide, our design tool, which allows you to go through and uh, get a full bill of materials quoted out um, for any of the systems that you're working on, be it grid tied, off grid, uh, battery backup, um, and you know, myriad of different mounting solutions, ground mount, pole mount, flat roof, our liquor carport. Um, so there's a lot of great different options. Gives you the full bill of materials as you're going uh, dynamically and changes the, the quantities that you're gonna need. Um, you know, you can play around and, and get sort of a, a full quote within five minutes so you have an idea. Uh, and then if you have any questions, you can reach out to your Renvu sales engineer. We can review that quote with you and make any adjustments based off of uh, your specific situation. Um, but a real great way for you to, to get a quick quote based on, um, you know, your, your needs. Uh, cool. Let's skip to that last slide. Cool. Um, so that's my last little bit there. Uh, thank you, Terrence. Fantastic uh, presentation. Um, and wanted to kind of jump into some of the, the Q&A uh, portion of the, of the presentation. I know I think um, we had a few of those where uh, Michael jumped on and, and answered a handful of them, but um, maybe just kind of review them in case everybody didn't see them and we can um, kind of re review those and, and you can go over those, Terrence, and kind of right. maybe expand yeah. on on some of those questions. So we had someone ask initially about uh, the operating mode named off-grid backup um, and it being a, um, a little ambiguous, but I think you touched a little bit on that. Um, and then yeah. can it be com commissioned purely as an off-grid system? Um, so uh, maybe if you just wanna kind of expound on that and talk about sure. um, the diff four different operating modes. Sure. Well, uh, first operating mode is just as a grid tie inverter with no battery at all. And you would set it up as uh, uh, you'd go into the menu and tell the inverter no battery. And then you'd tell the mirror inverter that there's no meter either uh, installed here. And you just set it up as a grid tie. And 
you know, this is, uh, it's identical to our other grid tie inverters. And so it can be set up this way quite easily. And you can call it kind of battery ready and, and maybe even, uh, you know, uh, arrange for uh, uh, a return to the site a year later to discuss whether or not they may have any need. Now, the first, as I noted, uh, 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 kind of default operating mode is self-consumption and it will discharge the battery uh, at the end of the day uh, to ensure that you're using as many of your solar kilowatt hours as possible. Um, and then time of use is relatively self-explanatory. You can set it up for a discharge of the battery during certain hours. But the off-grid backup really, you know, uh, I think it's more of a terminology issue. It, it truly, uh, it can operate, quote, off-grid, meaning it doesn't need to be connected to the um, uh, grid to operate properly. Uh, it can operate just normally, uh, you know, taking PV power and charging the batteries and taking that power from the batteries and running them over to your critical load panel. And it can do that quite, a, uh, you know, indefinitely, essentially. Uh, but it's not really an off-grid system in that, you aren't really acting as the grid. You are, you are, you are not the grid. You are just a kind of a substitute for the grid temporarily. And so it really is more of a backup. I think that's more of a, a critical loads backup. Uh, you know, some folks call it partial home. I, I'm not from, I'm not to, down with that particular descriptor. I kind of like it as a critical loads, those loads that are most important to your family should uh, you uh, lose power, you know, you want to be able to charge those phones, you want to have internet, you want to have a refrigerator going, you want to have that sump pump going, you want to have some lighting going, that sort of thing. And this is the kind of thing that will get a family through. And, and, it, and indeed, it's, it's not, uh, you can't keep the hot tubs going and, the, and, and that sort of stuff. But, but uh, it's really, I think you should think of this as a, uh, as a, as a backup solution. Uh, for a uh, system for homeowners that maybe don't have the 40 grand to put into these big systems uh, uh, and uh, want to maybe expand later on and uh, 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 could really use just a little bit of backup just to ensure that uh, uh, they're not uh, um, you know, in any sort of uh, uh, compromised position uh, should they lose all the lighting in their home, for example. So I like to think of it in that way as a, uh, as a, a kind of a, a jumping off point and a place where folks can really get into batteries and, and backup power quite easily and quite cheaply uh, using this system. Great. Thank you. We had another question that kind of uh, piggybacks on that from David. Um, is it intended that the critical loads will always be powered from the backup terminals, even when grid power is on, or is it? possible to be configured. Yeah, they're they're actually connected through the inverter. And so essentially the 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 loads don't know that they're in a critical load panel uh until uh until the power goes out and then all the loads in the service panel know it. Uh, and uh, the, the the loads in the panels still think it's connected to the grid, right? And so um yeah uh it can be set up you know as an off-grid product. It's not really designed and Mike uh, Michael will uh, uh, emphasize this as well. It's not really designed to be set up as a off-grid inverter. Um, it, it, it can be set up that way. And actually, I was just in a home uh, in Detroit uh, where they don't have AC power yet. And we set up the system and he's... Uh, uh, we put in an off. We put in a critical load panel for him, and he's wiring up a couple of circuits in that home so that he can continue to work on that home until they get AC service there. So, although it's not really designed for that kind of service, it really it can operate in that way. Now, some folks uh, even put uh, uh, hybrids in parallel with each other, and indeed, this is also possible. Uh, and indeed, uh, the newest product uh, that we're offering next year is what some folks are, are hearing is stackable, but indeed this, this uh, in product can operate in parallel with each other, much like our grid type products. They have to be set up in a, a certain way. And so we would like you, if you are going to parallel these inverters together and operate them as grid type products, we would ask you to, to give us a ring and talk to us about that install. But uh, really the product is designed to be a standalone product that uh, can operate on grid and off grid and with a variety of different battery sets. Unmute. Um, excellent. Thank you. And then David kind of followed that up about, I guess, the, the transfer switch, which was another question we had, I think, uh, in there at some point um, in, in terms of 
requirements for an auto transformer or transfer switch. Right, right. We put out 240 line one, line two out of the uh, AC backup terminals. And so you'll need to run that over to an auto transformer. Now, you could buy one off the shelf. You know, they're available from Granger and that sort of thing. And you would look for a 6,000, 7,000 watt, ideally, because it can, because the inverter can put out uh, not continuously, but backup wise uh, for surge loads up to 7,000 watts. And so you would want to find an auto transformer with that kind of rating. But I think you might find that using our auto transformer is a bit more convenient because indeed it does have connections for uh, both the inverter AC1 and AC2, uh, the main service panel and the load panel. And so um, in my opinion, uh, you know, uh, the auto transformer is another box. Remember, I claimed that this is a single box solution, but indeed uh, for backup power, you're gonna need that second solace box. So I think making it quite, tra quite versatile uh, and fast install. Uh, but indeed, uh, that's gonna give you the 240, uh, 120 split phase power that you wanna have inside of that critical loads panel, because indeed you may not even have any 240 loads in that panel. They may all be lighting circuits, refrigeration, gaming, and, uh, and your security system in the home may all be uh, 120 loads and that's fine. You can, uh, it's 100% uh, unbalanced. You can load the entire 6K on 120 if you wanted to. Excellent, great. Um, I guess a, a different question that we got earlier in the chat was about the, um, the NEMA rating, um, which I know uh, it's NEMA 4X, correct? So maybe if you just wanna discuss what that entails and I, I know, uh, um, a lot are, are not that highly rated and are, are usually capped out at NEMA 3 or 3R. So maybe just talk about the differences. Yeah. And As I noted, we, we were attacked from all six sides when we were up on a you know, three-pole, uh, three-leg uh, Roan tower or something for a, for a wind uh, machine. So uh, really, we're protected on all sides. And, and I guess the vulnerable spot would be the wire box because that's another thing about PV string inverters these days, they brought in the wire, uh, the combiner box into the inverter. And so you're gonna wire those strings directly to each MPPT, ensuring optimal performance. Now, uh, that cover has a full seal around it. You need to ensure that that cover is on. And if you do wanna ensure NEMA 4X uh, rating and you wanna uh, opt, you know, ensure that you're gonna pass as a NEMA 4X box, if that's indeed what you're claiming, you will need to use those uh, um, weather-resistant conduit fittings as you make connection with the with our essentially a conduited capable uh, wire box on the bottom of the inverter. And and so uh, to retain that NEMA 4X rating, you want to make sure that your that your uh, gasketed cover is fully on with the four screws that to hold it in place, and that uh, you brought in your watertight to, uh, conduit fittings. Uh, to the knockouts on the inverter, and then you retain that NEMA 4X rating. Now, if you use just regular conduit fittings, uh, then essentially the, the, the wire box has now become NEMA 3R. But uh, uh, here's another thing too, is that you know, you're gonna make your connection with that uh, cellular stick, for example. There's a, a four pin plug on the bottom of the inverter. Uh, it, looks, uh, it looks a little bit like this. Uh, you can see, you can see it's like in the bottom of the inverter. It's a four pin plug, and two of them for power and two of them for, uh, for the data. And uh, they can be, and I can just plug in, sorry about this folks. Uh, I can just plug in uh, a cellular stick like this. You can see uh, the screen on the front with the LEDs giving you indication what's going on, the antenna on the bottom already installed. And then you have that four pin uh, receptacle, uh, plug, you could say, and this is the receptacle, I guess, uh, uh, where, uh, and the two plug together, and uh, like that. I just happen to have this receptacle off an inverter that I've been playing around with, but indeed, that's the way it operates, very easy, and that, and you retain your NEMA 4X, even as you're switching out your Wi-Fi stick, maybe for your cellular stick. Hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and then we had another question in the chat from, from Craig about what the continuous load rating for the critical power output was. 6,000 watts. 6,000 watts. Cool. 7,000 surge. 
Perfect. Um, and let's just jump in. We had another question from earlier that I think Natasha um, mentioned, but something that, that's definitely uh, relevant for everybody. Um, can the it, it's basically the RSD uh, compatibility and whether or not you can use um, the SPRT version of the inverter with Tygo if you disable the internal SunSpec transmitter uh, and yeah. use their external um, and I guess maybe some other configurations of you know. Mm -hmm. So Indeed, good like question, that. because uh, we've thought about this, too, as to, you know, how, how are guys going to get to retain that versatility? And then maybe they only have uh, uh, in stock, they were able to get a, uh, an inverter with a, with a, with a suspect transmitter in a minute. And, and indeed, there is a red uh, uh, button, uh, push button on the side of the inverter where you can just hit that button and that'll disable, well, that'll shut power off to the internal transmitter board. And that'll immediately uh, initiate rapid shutdown. So you actually have a rapid shutdown initiation switch right there on the side of the inverter. And so you can just push that dude in and uh, you've essentially cut off AC power to the transmitter board. It's not drawing a lot of power, truthfully, but it is drawing a little bit of power and it is sending PLC signal up to there uh, for no reason, really. Uh, and then it, let's say you just want to do some sort of external TIGO, you can just shut off the internal SunSpec one and put an external TIGO on there and boom, you're ready to rock and roll. I should also mention that our auto transformer has a bypass switch on it so that in normal mode, it's on one so that it's operating, you know, ready to go should you need access to your loads, uh, critical loads panel. But should you want to, so let's say, work on the inverter or swap out the inverter or shut down the inverter for some reason, you can do that and by just throwing the bypass switch on the auto transformer and then that essentially connecting your critical load to your uh, service panel. And so, you know, you can uh, operate, you know, on grid essentially with all your loads while you fix your inverter. Very convenient, very nice. And it's just the sort of thing, convenient package that we have together to try to reduce time on site you know, to reduce the amount of deconstruction you need to do and, and, and inconvenience for your uh, customers. They never have to even know that, you're, that you've got the inverter offline and you're working on it while you're there on site. Excellent, thank you. I think we're we're coming close to the to the end of the hour, so maybe we'll do two more questions, okay. um, and then uh, and then kind of wrap things up. And uh, just a any questions we don't get to, or if you have questions afterwards, um, we'll pull the list and and we can reach out mm -hmm. to you and answer those questions. And, and yeah, yeah. afterwards, you can can reach out to us as well. Um, but uh, let's see here. So um, someone was taking a look and saying that they've got a a, a current system um, with sixteen kilowatt worth of panels. Um, with microinverters mm -hmm. and wanted to add batteries uh, um, for time of day use and, and loss of grid power. Um, so I guess they're taking a look at doing an AC coupled system of some sort and, and wanted to, I guess, confirm that that was, was doable and, and I guess hear some more about the details of that. Well, number one is quite doable. And uh, with a microinverter system like that, you can add AC, you know, add a Tesla system in parallel with it for example, as an AC coupled system. And I'm just picking out Tesla. There's other options for you out there, but AC coupling is nice in that it essentially has its own battery management inverter uh, attached to it, you know, and uh, I've got my opinions on that, but uh, indeed with a microinverter system like that, it's always quite easy to, to just add it up. Now, if you wanted to run a, a, a string inverter in parallel uh, on that same, you in theory could do that and add batteries to it. And that would, uh, when the power goes out, uh, the microinverter system, of course, would anti-island. Our own hybrid inverter would anti-island and then power up uh, uh, the critical loads panel with battery uh, power and PV power that's available. And so this can be done, but uh, we're not going to be able to, you know, connect one of our inverters to a, a microinverter system, you know, formally. But uh, but indeed, well, that's a lot of what PV his offering installers and customers these days is the ability to, to parallel these systems and expand systems if required. Excellent. And then that's kind of, that kind of plays into the, the next question, which was in, in relation to paralleling to inverters and to auto transformers, each powering their own set of critical load branch circuits. Um, and it, what considerations might go into, into that? And there's actually, I think, a kind of similar question to related to the auto yeah. transformer with the... Um, what you would do for the neutral being tied to the main utility or left alone. Um, 
So yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, the neutral will go through the uh, will go through the service panel to the auto transformer to the to the uh, sub panel. Uh, we, uh, the Solus inverter, uh, the AC1, uh, just puts out uh, line one, line two, and a ground. And the same thing is true of AC2, line one, line two, and a ground. So uh, there's no neutral uh, required for that particular uh, wire runs. But indeed, you'll have a neutral and ground uh, through your auto transformer, your service panel, and, and uh, sub panel. Uh, what was the second half of that question, Nick? Yeah, just about um, paralleling two inverters with two auto transformers, um, <laughs> right. each powering their own set of uh, of critical load circuits. Well, this is this is possible. It is. You can essentially put uh, uh, your your. There's only a single breaker uh, in the service panel for uh, this system. Um, I could I could maybe go back to the drawing, but the drawing is a little bit small, so I'll. I'll uh, but if you want to see a drawing of the system, there's only one breaker in the service panel, and that one breaker uh, is sized for the maximum AC output of that inverter. But then the power, the power from that uh, breaker goes right into the auto transformer, and then the auto transformer goes to the AC1 output uh, from, and that's how that's your grid tie just straight through. Think of it that way. But then it also go, can go through the auto transformer itself and go 120, 240 split phase and go down to the critical load panel. And so, um, well, in a situation like this, now you're asking the installer to essentially break up the critic, break up the service panel into three panels. Into and this is theoretically possible. We've done this where there was a, a hybrid out in the garage and it was powering some of the garage loads, you know, and then another one inside the house with some house loads in it. So it's possible, but it starts to get really complicated as far as wiring goes. And so. We would uh, typically encourage folks to use a single inverter and single transformer and uh, a single critical load system on in, in the home today with the product that we have today. There are some capabilities of paralleling together, and we'd like to talk to you a little bit about that to ensure that all the battery uh, internal settings are set up so that you get a good operation in this kind of solution. But indeed, we're generally encouraging folks to use this as a single inverter system today. Uh, and then look to Solus here in the coming year as we come out with a new larger size and smaller size uh, hybrid inverters. <laughs> and those inverters are indeed stackable where you can use a separate battery, let's say a BYD 17K or even 32K battery on each one of, let's say, three inverters in parallel. And it's funny, we were talking to a guy yesterday about how we parallel battery sets together. And indeed, that's done by the inverters that are each managing their own battery set and essentially uh, all sending all three, let's say it's three or, or two, battery set the power to a, a single critical load panel that has been paralleled uh, with the outputs of both inverters or all three inverters. It's it's. It's such an exciting solution because indeed, this is a kind of solution that we're looking for as solar power becomes more and more dominant across the world and replacing fossil fuel. Uh, indeed, homeowners need this kind of power, this capability, even up to, we were talking about 22K on one house, but you know, these larger systems are getting, you know, quite, are gonna have to have sometimes this kind of capability. And so they're gonna need to be paralleled up. Let's say two of our new 11.4s, you know, being offered next year. and later in the year, uh, that would give you 22K, you know, of, of capability and indeed be able to run uh, most of the loads in a 200 amp uh, uh, type service. And so we recognize the need and that sort of thing and the capability and the, and the uh, well, just the requirement on some of these larger homes to parallel a number of these inverters together. And indeed, we'll have a solution. It's just that I want you to focus in this coming year from October to October here on what we can do well. And what we can do well is provide those critical loads in 10 milliseconds, keep your life rocking and rolling, uh, you know, set you up as a grid tie and expand you into batteries a little later on to give you a taste. Uh, and maybe that allows you to then sell them the big kahuna system, you know, uh, later on. And, 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 and Solus is going to provide that same reliability and rock solid performance uh, in those larger inverters that we do today and some of our smaller stuff. So uh, we welcome you to take a look 
at uh, what we're doing. Take a look at some of our global offices as well. You know, you can see what we're doing in uh, the UK or India or that sort of thing to kind of prove out to you that we've got a company here that's been in the black, as Natasha likes to say, since our inception. It's been a well-run company and it's been, and it hasn't uh, oversized itself, you know, or tried to keep too much of it. it it's, it's, it's grown with the times and with the, uh, with our own internal capabilities. It's been a, it's been an, uh, uh, I've been working for them now for six years and, and, uh, and indeed I've seen some excellent uh, progress as we move forward and the products themselves are top end. And so I enjoy working for a company that, that provides a, you know, kind of a boring little reliable inverter that just <laughs> does its job. And, uh, and so uh, indeed, I, I want to make sure that we've grounded ourselves and leveled ourselves as to what this product is great for. And uh, I encourage you to take a look at those kinds of systems when you, when you have an opportunity. Excellent. Thank you, Terrence. Well, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and, and wrap things up there. Um, thank you again, and thank you, Natasha, for joining us. It was a fantastic presentation, fan, fantastic Q&A section there. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said to anybody else, if there were questions that um, didn't get answered or uh, if you come up with questions later, please feel free to, free to reach out to us. Um, and other than that, we'll thank you all for joining, and we'll see you for the next webinar. Look forward to it, Nick, and to oh, your entire audience. Thanks for joining. Appreciate your time. You know, this is Thank you for having us. And uh, and uh, the time is precious these days. Gotta, and so appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Really do. Have a good one, everybody.